Hi guys, back again. Uh, welcome to part three of the making of the Hemingway's Kits large bore lathe steady rest. When I say large bore, and I've not mentioned this before, I don't think I might have done in part one. <coughs> I think it was specifically made for or manufactured for um, guys who do like steam engines, model steam engines where you've got a large cylinder and you want to do some detail work on it uh, and you can hold it in the outside of the jaws on say a small lathe uh, but there's no way of supporting it and I think that's got I think it said 129 millimeters of um, holding right down to a quarter of an inch so yeah from small items to large the problem with like my uh, lathe is only a small lathe, it's the Myford Super 7B um, and on the Myford uh, they do uh, a lathe steady rest, Myford did one uh, and I think it was quite expensive, a lot more expensive than this kit uh, and it did 50 millimetres there around 2 inches in diameter and that was its limit and it was a casting so you, you know you couldn't do anything with it. If you look on YouTube <coughs> lots of people have made them and they've made them out of sheet steel, they've made them out of some huge bar stock cut down for larger lathes, smaller ones, um, but a lot of it entails usually stick welding or MIG welding and yeah they're okay, they're, they're great and they do the job and if it does the job then that's all that matters, don't matter how it's made. Um, the Hemingway's kits one is, a, I've got to say, to coin it, it, they're a beautiful thing. When they're done, they, they do look really, really nice. And I'm hoping that this one will, especially when it's all painted up, etc. Um, so, part three, we've done quite a lot. I'm doing this introduction after the fact that I've done the work. I haven't even edited it yet and I've got the Pinnacle Studio open and I'm about to start. It's 5 to 10 at night on a Saturday night, the 17th of December 2022 and there's something like 46 videos and those 46 videos have all got to be edited, clipped, cut, altered and then fit together and then saved as one video. So anybody that's a YouTube creator will know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyone who is not a YouTube creator and doesn't really dabble in video won't know that the amount of effort put into it is enormous. So I'm saying it's four minutes to ten now. I'm gonna spend probably four hours, I'm gonna be into the early hours just compiling the video but I'm hoping that you're going to like it. I did get quite a bit of progress on this one. Um, do I show you a snippet beforehand? I can but I'm not going to show you the actual casting. I'm going to show you that's a 516 sole drilled nine and a half millimeters deep to accept the what I'm going to make out of phosphor bronze little tapered fingers three point some inches long three point three and seven eighths long and in metric money 98.4 millimeters and that's what exactly what they are the groove in there and the end chamfered. There's four of those to make. So just a little snippet. So I hope you enjoy the video that I'm about to uh, produce uh, and upload. Uh, that's part three. There's going to be a part four too. So like, subscribe and share. That's what they say on Salvage rebuilds in it. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, guys. stainless rod That's, yeah stainless um, so I'm making a fixture which I'll show you what it's for we've we've chopped them in half as you know and then I did some serious measuring now if you can see them lines that were measured and marked as per how it all worked out but it was wrong uh, it's showing this as an inch diameter, this um, hinge swivel, as an inch diameter. Uh, and this is the bottom bit, so this is going to have the cheeks um, machined off. But what I've done is I've drilled and reamed them quarter, and that's quarter rod. And I'm going to put them back to back, I think. Am I going to put them back to back? Or clamp them face to face? Probably back to back. And I'm going to mill the shape that I require. Because these castings are all over the place. It, it's angled really bad there. So I've sat a, a V block in there in the vise on a couple of parallels. On it loose. Not braid down or anything. And then I put this V block in. It's, it's a nice pair of e-blocks actually uh, that's a deep V, this is a shallow one, so that's the shallow one and that nips that piece of quarter stainless rod then drop a piece of tube on so that these don't whack the vise so I can now swivel that about its face and mill it and if I clamp them, I suppose I could do them both together like that put a clamp on here on this end and I can do them both together go that way but there ain't probably going to be much to remove from this side
this is a step there, like a plumbing inlet camshaft off a Morris Minor. So yeah, I need to uh, turn that around that way so I can get that in. Oh, that way, that way. Okay, I'll bring it back to the bench when I've got that finished. And then I've got to start looking at the um, narrowing down to make the hinge. Right. So this is the result of tonight's labour. So I'm going to going to be awkward this, but I'll try and do it. Even if I just bolt it with a quarter bolt for now, and uh, once it's bolted, I can uh, start to do this end. Uh, this end's interesting because what they give you to do it with, it, it, it shows. Shows this side to me, which is a half round stud and threaded, and then that thumb screw goes on the top. And that's what they give you to do it with. Piece of quite a bit half inch stock, so that's got to be radiused, and it's got to be cut to size as in cut in and then leave it at a quarter or whatever size it works out at so I can get a die knot, a die knot down it and die it and, and thread it so that's going to have to be probably held in lathe and maybe interrupted cut, chop it, chop it down or mill it down I've wound the table uh, the, the knee right up Clamped, which will get closer. Excuse moving the camera. There. Lift it a bit. I've got fan eating and I've just come in, so you'll have to just excuse that noise. In fact, I'll turn it off. So we've got a, a 10 milli carbide four flute cutter in there and I've got two work holding clamps and clamp that down onto that machined face and the, I've set it with my new Parkside angle finder I sat it on here, struck it across the back edge of the uh, base and got 45 degrees not critical but I just thought I'll do it right so it shows on the drawing let's have a look yeah if you look there it's 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 cut at an angle you see it again there so that's going to be that angle hope that's right so I've worked out what I need it lead, it needs to have a tang left the male part a quarter of an inch thick in the middle so I did a bit of a fag packet drawing so that middle bit is going to be 625 625 have a look on the chart 625 625 5 eighths. I'll double check that that's actually going to leave 5 eighths. no you idiot start again <laughs> Stevie GTA cock ups here this measures 625 and I need a tang left, a quarter. 
so I need to take 18750.1875. I'll I'll do it in in uh, metric actually. I'll convert it. It's it's easy to read the arrow that way. Uh, milled off the top of that. Then I need to turn this over and do the same on the bottom. And hopefully, if I've, everything's right. Uh, I might mark this where it is so I can try and get it back in the same spot when I cut the other side. But uh, all being well, that should leave a quarter tang on it. So I'm just going to take gentle cuts. I'm going to have to do it on the Y, doing it that way. Okay. Four point seven six four point seven six two from either side in metric. So I've tightened that to four point seven five four point seven five five so I'm under. I've gone under and then when I've cut the slot, if I cock that up I can adjust. Uh, I can always bring this back, it's dead easy to set up. So I can always bring this back. And uh
Right. That's just about it. I've just left a bit on. I did. Went two five oh. Quarter of an inch, six point three five millimeters. Lovely. Well chuffed with that. That's what other part turns out as well. found a new carbide I think it is fairly new no it's got a right little chip on one of them it's a three float carbide I think I dropped that and cursed for a while sets up again now because uh, it's taken some clamping of this I've put a lot of parallels at the back you see what I'm pointing at I've put parallels at the back uh, and a long arm clamp on it and uh, a shorter one on here with parallels and bits of block and all sorts it's onto two uh, one two three blocks uh, there's the single pad I was going to clamp it on but I thought it might rock so I've got it on the two flats here and I've clamped it on that I need to make sure that's actually vertical because that casting's rough and you know what I don't think it is I might have to file this casting I mean heck I might have to take all this off again yet I will get to you at some point when I've got this set up right that is wrong 
I need to get that because if that isn't uh, cut straight it's not going to go together straight I'm almost sure that ain't right No, eight to seven and a half degrees should be ninety, shouldn't it? Yep. Cock up. I'll come back when I've got it right. Right, guys, got to a boat and start again. So. I'd got it all clamped down ready to start this slot uh, and these edges they're not square these castings like all tapered at an angle that around so I can see what we're doing so the, the cat I've, I've run a file over that but it's still not right and there's no way I'm going to do it with a file and also I'd forgot that when I come to do the slot at the other end they're, they're going to be clamped like that as well or well, possibly not you know, it's going to be clamped on that isn't it so really yeah I need to do that as well I think what I'm going to do is run all the way around not that easy on the corners like I might have to do it with sandpaper but it's tapered you, you're probably not going to be able to see it but it's not it's tapered up it's not square. Bang a square on it and have a look. Not one here. Yeah, it's quite a way out. I don't know if you can see that. But there's a gap. Yeah. No, oh, that one's all over the place. Yeah, it's terrible. No, I'm going to have to get milling machine out, uh, sorry, um, another milling cutter out and do them. I'm going to take that out because it's only one I've got and it's a quarter and I need it for that slot. Right, start all over again. I'll come back when I get somewhere nearer and I've machined them. Right, it's 11 o'clock at night, uh, I've been out with friends this evening to local motorbikers coffee bar where we always go. I thought I'd just bump back in and show you what I did off camera. Uh, I did set it all back up again um, and I set it that way around so that it had the pads so that I've, I had some room. And. Um, I've milled, as you can probably see, that face and that face, that base, and that, and that. So now I can mount that and it'll be, it'll be straight. You can see that. So this all wants setting back up again. What I didn't say earlier about this was, and I showed a close up of this, well that does need dressing, but I'll dress this with a file. And there, where that mark from that cutter was, that just needs radiusing in. Other than that, really pleased with that part of it, and I'm hoping I'm gonna be just as pleased with this part. See, with that it didn't matter, because that were clamped down like that on a flat surface doing that and on those pads that if you remember I'd machined <laughs> so all the four pads are the same so when I turned it over that was okay as well the only thing was there were a little bit of spring with it that way because it was sat on pads and I ain't got any machinist jacks it'd have to be a real dinky one wouldn't it or some sort of packings I did feel a bit of vibration that's why I kept the cuts as shallow as possible because <clears throat> we're not in any race here the thing is to get it accurate and uh, hopefully it'll turn out well so tomorrow I'll come back in and I'll and I'll set it all up again to do this slot 
Um, there's just a bit I'm adding into the video, so I'm not leaving you out of anything. I didn't show doing those, but you know, it was just a case of put it in, mill that and mill that, then turn it, mill that, then same again. Uh, to get that bang on right, I, I brought the milling cutter in till it touched, and I went back, I set a zero, went back out, came across, back in again, set a zero went back out and checked and it went okay it, it went out a little bit I tapped it around and nipped it back up and I clamped it again with two two clamps um, that way sorry clamped it that way so that I could get the milling cutter down to a depth so tomorrow we are going to attack that and I will video when I've got it all in and set up it's no good me showing you set up because this video is already getting too long as usual with my videos they always end up too long um, and I just I, I end up re-editing it and clipping bits out and sometimes I wish I hadn't have clipped it out because there's things that some of you lads you know or gals that might want to see and I've gone and chopped it out it's not always a good idea clipping stuff out but I'll give you an idea I think so far the videos I've done have been something like seven, seven hours. So obviously you're clipping loads of bits out because you can't put all that on. OK, I'll come back tomorrow and we'll have another play with that. Something I forgot. <sighs> so I can create a stop. We've got a depth stop here. Uh, we're going that way. So I want to hit that stop there. So you undo that screw. You lift that block up. Move that up to there. I've got to stop. X. Is that right anyway?
Right. Where's the pin for it? I'm quite pleased with that. So, let's pull this up so I can see what's happening here. So, there's a gap there, look. The only way I could have not had that gap is if I'd have drilled that hole what were marked really low last time and I made this very small. So the casting is definitely undersized in certain aspects but as long as all these line through and I can get I've ordered the right long drill bit so that I can drill all the way through so and the nap came today which is stainless steel threaded rod M6 so yeah, that's going to work out great, is that? That's going to be Brill or Mondo. Yeah, well just. So, on to the next bit, which is to sort this out, this lock. Right, so I'm on with uh, making this part here, which is the... Um, swinging bolt that goes in the slot here so I'm on with that it's flat bar so I'm having to I've clocked it up in the far jar and then uh, I'm going to have to turn it down I've, I've already made a start but uh, that one's turning down so it's well it says to do it in quarter BSF or M6 I'm going to do it M6 because everything else is M6 so I'm going to do that in M6 so that one's turning down to 6mm and that's what we're on with well, I'm going to take it real steady I drill in it only needs to be just an inch, inch long but what I'm going to do is I've, I'm turning it down a lot more than that so when I finish I can get rid of that dimple in the end because there's quite a, a good length of it I don't believe it's for anything else apart from this it's an interrupted cut so it's a bit noisy our time off down to size at 5.98 but this has to have a square shoulder on it and that cutting tool won't cut in a square shoulder but I think this one will this away and then you can have a proper look at it so right so we've finished this part now we've got this down to size we've cut this shoulder in and the part of the flat is still stuck in there quite away 
which I'm going to have to do that feature, that radius and the hole in it afterwards. So my next job is to thread this. I need to just see how much thread it needs on it. But the total length, according to the drawing, is one inch, I believe. And I've got that one and a quarter. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, it's showing a total of one inch. And it's only showing thread on that end so it's not all threaded so I'll, I'll need to mark this up with some blue and then I'll, I'll mark where it needs to be a shank and then rest of it I'll thread and then I'll mark there you can see it just takes itself along when I get closer to where I want to be I'm going to put it back on jog Come on, baby. Think that's enough. So that's that little swivel bolt finished M6 and that's what's left on the material uh, I'm imagining probably that much will come off and then that's got to be radiused and then drilled to fit Right, I've done this on the belt sander So that's just needs drilling now. done and reamed a quarter 